Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order the regular city uh, council meeting for New Carlisle, Ohio, for uh, Monday, June 6, 2016, at 7 p.m. Mr. Collier, when you are ready, sir. Mayor Lowry. Here. Mr. Reynolds. Here. Mr. Lindsay. Here. Mr. Rick Lowry. Here. Mr. McLaughlin. Here. Five members. Thank you, sir. All right, if you'll stand tonight, we'll have the invocation by Councilman Will McLaughlin. If you bow your head, please. Lord, thank you so much for allowing us to be here. Thank you for our health. Thank you that the city came through the emergency over the weekend. It's done a very responsible matter, and we appreciate that. Again, thank you for our health. Uh, there's no, we did get water, and you know, we we're able to take care of everyone. So, a beautiful day. Hopefully we have good weather and continue. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Tonight we'll do the pledge. We'll use the flag here behind me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I get actions on the regular scheduled council meeting for 516-16. So moved. Second. Did you get that, sir? Yes, I'm working okay. Mr. Allen. When you're ready, sir. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. I'm staying. <laughs> McLaughlin. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. And it's passed four zero to one. Thank you, sir. All right, moving on. Uh, communications. Now we've got uh, Clark County Sheriff's Office here to discuss the RUOK Senior Safe and Sound Program. Good evening, and thank you for uh, giving me a few moments to talk to you this evening. My name is Doyle Wright. I'm the Chief Deputy with the Clark County Sheriff's Office, and it's always uh, great to come out to beautiful New Carlisle and spend some time with the, the citizens of this community, as uh, I do often in my time off, uh, eating at your restaurants and shopping and so forth. But uh, I'm here tonight to introduce a brand new program that uh, Sheriff Kelly kicked off last Wednesday. June 1st, and it's uh, the Senior Safe and Sound program called Are You OK? Letter R, letter U, OK. And it's a, a digital program that we have uh, purchased that is computerized, and it's uh, targeted to assist the senior citizens of Clark County, age 65 and older, who are living alone and want to be checked on daily. Just uh, they don't maybe have family or there's not a lot of folks around to uh, to check on them on a daily basis. So they can sign up for this program, and on a daily basis, depending on what time they want to get the call, they'll get a call from the Sheriff's Office, it's uh, electronic, digital, through the phone, and it basically will ask them, are you okay? They'll ask them to push a number, they push that number. If they respond correctly, all's good for that day. If they don't respond correctly, a deputy will be dispatched to check out their uh, house and information to make sure that they're okay. I have some forms along with me this evening that we will take down some basic information for anyone that's interested, and I'm going to leave those for you to put in your office over at the, at the city, city offices, and uh, anyone who is interested in picking one of those up, they can, they can get it to us in various ways. They can email it to me, uh, they can email it to the sheriff after they scan it in, they can mail it to us, uh, or they can drop it off. And uh, once they're put into the system and they're ready to go, uh, they're going to call from uh, the gentleman that does all this for us, Mike Combs, letting him know starting tomorrow you're going to receive these phone calls and kind of give him a little tutor as to what to expect out of this. So I have these forms with you. It, it doesn't matter where you live in Clark County. You can live in the city of New Carlisle, the city of Springfield. As long as you are a Clark County resident, age 65 and older, you qualify for this. Uh, so I'll leave these with... Uh, uh, Mr. Bridge, and he can take these over to the office, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have about it. Council? 
I have one. Mr. McGraw. Does it yes. matter if, uh, like a couple, if there was an older couple, no. they could sign up together? Is that correct? That, that's absolutely correct. Yeah, we're, we've uh, we kind of kicked this off last week. We have a triad meeting, and I don't know how many of you have ever attended the, uh, it's a SALT triad, which is seniors and law enforcement together. And they have that monthly meeting over at the Elderly United, um, Elderly United Services. Uh, which they're going to be moving soon to a brand new building. But we kicked this off with them last week and we left some forms over there. They have a Meals on Wheel program every day that kind of goes out, but it's only five days a week. So they would potentially catch <laughs> folks that may need to be checked on on a daily basis. But there's those weekends where they don't deliver meals that is kind of questionable as to, you know, what's going on with these folks and is somebody checking on them. So this program seven days a week. Uh, we did a little trial run, and I, I got my phone calls every day last week, so it works well, um, and we're confident that it's going to be a great thing for uh, all the citizens of Clark County. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. <coughs> all right, moving on to the city manager's report. Mr. Bridge. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council, and members of public. I'd like to share with you the city manager's report. Um, first uh, action item is Twin Creeks. It says on your agenda there is a meeting with the buyer on June 10th. I will say I did speak with the buyer's attorney this morning. He did want to add two words to the current agreement, past and present, I mean past, yeah, past and future, I'm sorry, to the assessment portion of the agreement. So actually that will be coming back to council on June 20th for an amendment. Uh, we will be meeting after July 4th. He's still interested. This is just a legal, legal matter. Um, moving on with that. Um, there is nothing under police discussion, however, I would like to add that Deputy Lyons uh, is out on injury. She had broke her wrist a, a few weeks back on uh, bike patrol training. We do have in her place uh, Deputy Jolene's iron, so she is actually currently in the field. Uh, so she will be with us until Deputy Cruz does return. And again, moving on, it's been on here for the past few weeks, we, I know that. Free smoke detectors, so if you know any senior citizen, who, who may need a smoke detector in their house. It's actually open to anyone. So if you know a neighbor who needs a smoke detector, our fire department is giving them away for free. Just call the fire department, give them your address. They will also come install it for you as well. New Carlisle Health staffs are attached for your review. Awesome, I mean also, an awesome event is American Legion Post 286 is having their flag retirement ceremony. That is on Tuesday, June 14th at 7 p.m. And it's located at 2251 North Dayton Lakeview Road. Um, I do believe our uh, one of our council members, Will McLaughlin, will be speaking at that event. Correct, sir? Briefly. Briefly? Briefly. Sounds good. And the last item under informational is we need to set a uh, work session for the tax budget. The tax budget will be introduced to council on June 20th. A preferred date would be Monday, June 13th. So you're, you're looking, that would be a preferred day of June 13th? Mm -hmm. It's a week from the day. A week from today? Okay. So it will be either be here or at the fire station, depending on the building. 637-ish? That's up to you. Mr. Mayor? Council. Mr. McLaughlin. Would that work for everyone? Yep. I'm just going to make a motion. I can't be there that day. Well, what day would work for me, Mr. Uh, you know. I'm sorry, I did not hear you. What day would work for you? Uh, uh, the next day or something? Or? Yeah, but, you know. How many is there going to be? Two of them? I mean, I hate to hold everybody up. There'll be a couple. You know. Yeah. Just one. 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 Yeah, just lost I'm pretty uh, open, really. Let's go with Wednesday then. <laughs> no. Can't do Wednesday. <laughs> Is that enough I mean, time for you to get stuff done? I can do it on Wednesday? It, it's the same as next Monday. I mean, okay, no, you're fine with Wednesday. Yeah. Huh? So, but I think you can do Wednesday. You can't do Wednesday? I, I'm, you know, I can do Wednesday. I can do any day, really, so it's whatever works best for you guys. What about Thursday? I, I just think that we're going to be talking about the tax budget. Or yeah. Things that we all need, we to, all be need to be there, so we Thursday, need to accommodate Thursday, whoever we need. Is Thursday to okay? Yeah. Thursday, I'm looking, at, Thursday. 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 I'm looking at what, 6 30, 7 o'clock? I won't be able to make it probably Thursday. I'll be out of the office all day at an attorney, so I don't know how long it's going to take to go to the meeting. Let's go with Friday. Um, no, don't do that. I'll make it work. I'll just come up here. It's in the, it's in the late, after, late evening anyway. Is later better for you, like 7? Just do 6 6. Just, I'll make it work. 
So 635. I'm sure we'll be done by the time I need to be back up. Here. So okay. that would be the 16th. Right. 630? Oh, I looked at my calendar wrong. That the 14th, 15th, 16th. Yeah, 16th. June 16th. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I move that we set up a tax, tax budget work session on June the 16th and 630 here. Here, is that where we're planning the meeting? Uh, we'll be here at the, at the fire station. Either here at the fire station and we'll be let know where we're going to meet. Absolutely. Because it's open to the public sure. as well. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Second, All right. Second. Council. Mr. Lindsay, second. At 630? Yes. Here. Either be here or at the uh, fire station. Just come here. If you're not here, we'll go to the fire station. Um, there will be a public notice in the paper, so you can look at that or you can give us a call later on. All right. Awesome. Call. Whenever you're. Uh, I have a motion by Mr. McLaughlin and a second by Mr. Lindsay for a tax budget work session on Thursday, 6 16 at 6 30 p.m. at the shelter house or the fire station, depending on availability. Yes, sir. Ready? Yes, sir. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. yes. Passes five to zero. All right. And that is all I have for the city manager's report. I'd be happy to uh, entertain any questions. Thank you, and sir. Before I go any further, if I could actually introduce, uh, I have asked Jason Rose to come today. He's our water superintendent. We don't build any questions about the oil advisor. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming, Jason. Mr. Lauer. Yeah. I have a couple of things. Sure. One is the uh, flag retirement. Mm -hmm. Just let you know if anybody's going to be there early, or you will not find a place to park or sit down. Uh, probably want to be there by 6 o'clock or 6 30. Second, Randy has uh, the Homeowners Association president, president of the Homeowners Association has been free. Has he been in touch with you at all not about arranging the anything? For the voting? He has not contacted me prior to the meeting that we had that I came to. And he said he would. He, he said he's just giving me a list of everything that is controlled by that. So right. we you go never have done that? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, Council? Thank you, Mr. Baird. Appreciate the report. And now we'll be moving on to comments from the members of the public. So if anyone in the public has any questions, uh, we'd ask you to go to the podium in the back and then state your name and address. Go ahead, Mr. Cobb. You can go ahead. <coughs> Ronald Cobb, 202 Villa Drive. What I want to address is the instance you had on the water problem over the weekend. I didn't know about it. I'm on the call list for emergencies and that, you know, if there is one in the city, I did not get a phone call. Several people in the city did not get phone calls. When, when did you put your name on the one call list? When did you sign up for the one call list? Oh, I can't remember when I signed up. My have wife you, signed up for that. Have you changed your number since then? <laughs> But I mean, there, there was, you know, I found out through Mr. Lindsay mm -hmm. is how I found out about it. And that was in late Saturday afternoon. We followed all protocols according to our uh, plan that we have in place. And that is notify the media, notify one call, and then the mayor graciously put it on Facebook. Dude, um, I can't hear you, Randy. So we followed a protocol in that situation. So we contacted all the media outlets. We had initiated the one call, which is actually put on by Clark County. And then we also had the mayor put it all over Facebook. So, um, well, I, I don't have Facebook. Sure. Well, as far as your, I would call the county and find out what number they have on file for you, um, and address it in that situation because we've heard a lot of people did get called. So the ones who didn't get called, there might be some issue that they have on their end with your number. Well, I'm just saying that's something sure. that needs to be looked into. Well, we can't look into it for your individual account. I can't call the county and be like, I need to know if Ron Todd's number is correct. That is something you have to take the responsibility and do yourself. We have the program in place. It is up to you to contact it and put your number in there. I have forms here if you'd like to refill one out, and we can take care of it from there. But I don't know what number you gave. I, that's something you have to call the county on. Sure. Yeah, no, Ron, I know um, 
on uh, Friday when that went out, uh, I got a call from Randy and Howie. And I think, uh, I don't know who you guys called before you called me, but I know everybody doesn't have internet and Facebook and things like that, but it's, it's instant. I mean, as soon as he called me, I think I put it on there. I'm not sure who else put it on there, but it's instant. Yeah. And then I know that he called the, ma the major uh, you know, channels two and, and seven, you know, and that's not quite as instant because I'm sure it takes him a few minutes to type up the text that goes on the TV and things like that. Uh, and I'm not sure who else you guys called other than two and, radio and, and seven radio stations. So, does that go over uh, emergency radios as well? You know, like the small emergency radios? Not the weather radios. Not the weather? Okay. Okay. So. But I mean, and honestly, we've got a very small town of people who say they did not get notified in a much larger amount that says they did. So, you know, I'm not saying you put your number in wrong, but I'll be honest with you. If we go to contact people off the water, like the numbers they have on their water account, a lot of times those are wrong. You know, so if you switch cell phones, if you switch, if you had your landline on there before and you got rid of your landline because you don't use it anymore because everybody uses a cell phone, they're not going to know to make the changes unless you yourself call and make those changes. Well, I mean, I'm just... Sure. I'm, I'm not dead, I'm alive, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> but I just wanted that to be addressed, that there was a problem. I mean, if it's been more serious than what it was, if it was more serious than what it was, we would have we have, we, would, we would have a different plan of attack. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carl. Uh, Sir. Uh, Sorry for us. Yes. On the back to the process on. Can I get your? I'm sorry. Can I get your name and address? He needs it for record. Frank Breast, 1006 White Pine. Thank you, sir. On the, on back to the water problem. When exactly was the problem found? What about, day and time? About 6.45 p.m. Friday, Jason gave me a call. It's about 7 o'clock. I was on phone with the media. There was absolutely no delay in notification. All right. What exactly was found in the water? I'll let Jason take that. <clears throat> we are mandated by the uh, Ohio EPA to test for bacteria. Uh, uh, total coliform. You are mandated to test a minimum of six samples per month. Uh, we test two a week and an additional sample every week that I test from the plant tap, which is the first service are you the at one the water charge? treatment plant. I am the superintendent for the water system. Okay. So you know, we uh, collected an additional sample. It's called a special purpose sample. Mm -hmm. It's an extra sample above and beyond what uh, is required. That is the sample that came back with a TC total coliform positive it's an indicator of a possible bacteria in the water so it magically just went away i had to collect additional samples friday evening how high was the level there's i know there are levels that are acceptable and i know that from what i understand our level was high so how did it come down so low so quick what we, we didn't get in, we didn't ask questions, and, and, and they don't specify the level. It was right. an indicator we had a point of bacteria. Okay. I, I don't care if it's a minimal or a large amount. Right. The fact that it was there. So where did that made, go? That's my question. If there's bacteria in it, it just doesn't disappear. And that's my, my question is, we went from being able to not bathe in it to the next day just say, go ahead and carry on. Never, no. never were we able to not bathe in it. Never. That was never brought up. We it's always been consumed. Adults could bathe, but consumed. children shouldn't. Who told you that? I don't know where that information came from. But that was a Facebook. Yeah. It was on Facebook. There okay. you go. Um, so that's the problem. Well, you, police okay. yeah. It was all over the town. The city website immediately had a boil advisory notice on it. Did anybody uh, not, actually I'm, city I'm, not, I, I'm just, my question is, what, what exactly was found? What type of bacteria? Feces? No. <clears throat> I'm not talking to you. You have, you have two forms. You have total coliform or you have E. coli. E. coli is a form of, of excrement uh, mm -hmm. or, or mammal waste. Okay. Uh, ours was total coliform positive. It's a precursor. There could be a problem. Um, those samples are tested and then sent to a lab. More than one person touches that sample. Okay. The idea of having that tested and getting a positive sample could be a lab contaminant could be something that somebody had on their finger, could be anything, um, grease, oil, that was there. That's why you take additional samples. So we did a boil notice with the feeling there could have been a problem. I don't want that on my shoulder. 
So right. I took additional samples. All of those samples, nine additional samples, all nine came back negative. Right. Therefore, we knew the water was safe. That's all I have. So Jason. Frank, how do you spell your last name? B-R-E-S-T. That's how I have it. Jason, let me just go over what you just said. So yeah. we are required monthly 10 tests. Uh, we are required six tests. Six monthly. tests a month. And we right. do two a day? Two a week. We do two a week as far as the routine samples. Okay. Above and beyond that, I also do an additional sample at the plant tap at the water plant, which would be the first customer on the water system. Okay. Just just on my own to make sure. That was the sample that came back positive. And then you can't actually come out and say, but from what I've heard you explain tonight and, and prior to tonight, I mean, you can't prove it, but once that sample's taken, it goes to a lab, Correct. You don't know who's touched it and where they had their hands prior to if they if they opened it and set it on a counter and put it back, you know. Correct. They are, the lids are sealed. Once they get to the lab, the way you test that is to open that back up and put chemicals back into it. So again, so hands, other hands have touched. Like Not necessarily you know, grease, but I have to prove that it is safe. Therefore, you, you, you assume something's wrong. That's what we did. We assumed we had a problem. Boil notice. I want everyone to be safe. From there, I have to prove that no, it's really not. Collect additional sampling. That's what we did. Thank you, Jason. Ma'am. Grace Myers, 225 Drake Avenue. <coughs> yes, you did make an, a, a good attempt, but not everyone watches local television or listens to the radio or is glued to Facebook to find out. And I had found out simply because my husband went to the store the following morning. I had already brushed my teeth. I was a little upset. When this happened, I know one other time in the past, and I'm going to say maybe 15 years, there was a car going up and down every street with a bullhorn telling people. At 743 when it was found, had someone done that, if I could hear it two streets away, you're going to get people if you drive up and down the street. And the only way that somebody's not going to hear it is if they're deaf or they're not in town. But you reach the greater majority if you do it like that. What you're expecting is that people are connected. And they may not be connected to outside media. And as far as the telephone thing, I didn't know that existed. So right there, I, you know, that just totally eliminated me. And had my husband not went to the store, I would not have known that there was a boil advisory until later on that day when I happened to see it on Facebook by someone who doesn't even live in the city. I, I think for something of this level and this nature, since it was precautionary, putting a car on the street with bullhorn telling everybody is a great way to induce panic. Um, I, didn't I think if it was a more severe, again, excuse me, I think that if it was a more severe fine or negative sample, then there's certain steps that you probably, yes, that but might have been away. But as the public, we don't know. Wait a minute, sir. Wait a minute. I interrupted you and now you're interrupting me, and I'd appreciate it if you'd just come back up here later. Um, all I'm saying is that I understand because I took the time to find out what it was. I did look at the CDC website. I did look at the health department websites to understand what this meant. Sure. And I understand that it may possibly have E. coli. May possibly. And I, you know, and it, it's stated that way. And I understand this. But if they went to the trouble to advise people through the media, there's a boil advisory. And you want people to do this, and young children and the elderly are the most prone to getting sick from something like this, if it indeed was truly contaminated at the well, then I think that that's just a small percentage that need, you need to make sure that they're reached. And not everybody does pay attention to all the news, or they're not watching regular TV, they don't have Facebook, they don't know about the call. All I'm saying is there a better way. I'm not saying that going around with a bullhorn is necessarily the right way, I'm just saying, I'm asking out of all of you, since you're the <coughs> leaders, to please see if there's something that's better. You know, is there a better idea? Throw it out and brainstorm on it. Think about it, ponder it, come back to it later. I'm not asking for an answer tonight. I'm just asking, can we do better? If one person gets sick, 
Is that what you want? Because you said, well, I've done all I, I've done all I can do. You know, I went, to, I put it on the news. Okay, yeah, you did, you, did what was, you did what was actually required, but is there something more? And that something more tells the citizens of this town that you care. And we live here, we, we, we pay taxes, and ultimately that's what pays your wages. And, you know, that comes from working in a restaurant for 20 years, you know, without thinking about the person who really ultimately does pay your wage. Don't care who signs it, the person that pays it is the person that gives you the money. And I'm just asking for that consideration. Man, thank, um, what was your, I'm sorry, what was your name again? Grace. Grace, thanks for coming tonight, Grace. Now, I, we, we had talked about this in Randy's office uh, a day or so ago. And I mean, you're right, there's always, there's always room for improvement. Now, whether, how big of an improvement, I mean, me personally, I do think for this type of precaution, I think a bullhorn, I think it would induce panic. And, and even then, you still wouldn't reach everybody because, you know, someone may have their air conditioner on with the TV going, a football game, whatever it may be. So you're, I, I think no matter what you do, you're always going to miss some people. Now, uh, you know, that may be a better way to go. Can I add something? Yes, please. Today, I called in Mr. Kitko, I called in uh, Mr. Rose, who's our water superintendent. We had a meeting in my office today. One of the outcomes that we did come in that we will now institute a answering service on our phone. So if you do call the city building, you will get a pre recorded message telling you straight from the city what is going on. You know, for us to go door to door for this kind of thing is not feasible. By the time that we got done going door to door with the staff that we have, it would have been two o'clock, three o'clock, maybe even later in the morning. You know, we follow the same guidelines that every other municipality does. We notify the media. I can't help and we can't help that if you don't hear from that. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong. And I think that through brainstorming, we possibly could get, you know, better ways to notify the public. But no matter what you do, not every one of your single citizens are gonna be notified. And that's, that's the bottom line. That's just how it is. Even if we had a system that automatically dialed everybody in the city, there's still going to be people who don't get that. People switch phone numbers all the time. They go from one carrier to another. They drop their landlord landline, forget they're even on this because they now use their cell phone. We have the programs in place from the city to notify you. It is up to you to take responsibility for your own family to take advantage of those programs. So what you're telling me is I have to watch regular TV instead of what I would rather be watching in order to make sure that I don't miss something like this. It happens extremely rarely. Sure, but that's why we have the one call in place. Well, I will use Sure, it. absolutely. Would you like to form? I'll get it. Okay. okay. Randy, that, oh, I'm sorry. It's just real quick, everybody's talking about this, this negative, or this positive sample. At the same time, there were two other samples collected that were negative um, right outside our plant. So number two customer and number three customer were negative for the same total call of form. So very isolated to the specific tap we were uh, sampling from. So we knew it wasn't out there. So that's what led us to believe boil advisory for precaution. We got something isolated right here. Whether it's contamination at the time of sampling, mishandling in between, or the lab uh, contaminating it, it, there's no way to find out because there's no test that is instantly, you can put in the bottle and say, I handed it to you, it's free, I handed it to you. So there was two negative tests just outside of the plant can you, in the distribution system. Can you, you know explain that. what you're talking about there, Howie? Because I know you talk. What he's saying is where they took the initial test that was that was positive, right? We so took, so we they, took, went, they went to two other sources right outside our plant, which is down by the ball field. So they went to, say, Dr. Davitha's and the DMV and pulled water samples from there, correct? Because they're so close to our water field that... If the, if the test was bad at the water field, it should, in theory, be bad at those close uh, sources of water, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. I was just making sure we were getting across that. So. Dr. Davis, that was positive? No, no they negative. were negative. Oh, okay. Um, Mr. Lowry. Thank you. And I know this is you people's turn, but you're not going to get to everybody. It's impossible. If I'm outside cutting grass, my phone's laying on the table, I'm not going to hear it. I come in and take a drink of water before I pick up my phone. And if anybody here thinks that the city didn't care about people and say, pardon my language, all the hell with it, we don't care if they drink and take it back then, that's totally wrong. Okay? They did what they thought. <coughs> and if 
followed the proper protocol. Now, can we sit down and look at it and see if there's something better we can do? Yes. But I can assure you, there was no bullhorn that came down Plumwood Avenue when I lived there when the mercury was in there. As a matter of fact, there was four streets that was never notified until the following day. Relax. And it happened. Yeah. With the mer when, the, when they thought the mercury was in there. When, when the pump, you know, and, you know, shake your head and say, we're not doing nothing, that's fine. But that's not true. Okay? Everything was done the proper way. Do we miss people? Absolutely. I'll be honest with you. I looked at my phone and I didn't answer it because it had some weird number on it that I didn't recognize. And I said, I'm not answering it. It's Rachel from Credit Card Services trying to help me out like she always does, you know. And, and, I, didn't, and I didn't answer it. Come to find out, that's exactly what it was. And that's a recommendation. I, I, I heard that these caller IDs came out of New York. New York. Yeah, you know, New, yeah. I, I didn't think that. about it. So I'll talk to the county about that. It needs to have a local 937 area code. I wouldn't answer my phone. I wouldn't answer it either. Can I sit here and make a couple of suggestions? Let, let's, let me, let's let Nancy go and then we'll get you. Nancy, can you go to the podium, please? Nancy Lubanovich, 505 Pease Drive, New Carlisle, Ohio. I did get a call. Uh, shocked me to death because I didn't know who it was, but they went on through and left a message on the answering machine. Now, if you might not have an answering machine, you wouldn't have got it, I, I suppose. Um, so I think it did work well. I'd like to know when we got an all clear, uh, if it was all through the weekend, or if we had an idea that it was clear before then, if there would have been another follow-up call to let me know that, I would appreciate it. And I also want to know how did it affect our swimming pool? Were we able to get people in there or did it affect our revenue? Uh, the one call now, I authorized it on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. As soon as uh, Jason called me with the results, uh, I called the county, they sent that out uh, within 10 minutes. They did the all, uh, boiled uh, advisory lift. I didn't get that one. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, we sent out the second one. Okay. And then the swimming pool, that's a whole different ball game. It's, you're allowed to basically bathe, and the chlorine levels of a swimming pool are double the water quality standards. Okay. So uh, they have a minimum of two parts per million chlorine residual. And for instance, if someone, if a young child takes a, a, a poop in the pool, okay. we can have someone back in the pool in an hour once we shock it. So okay. that tells you the difference. We wouldn't do that, obviously. With, you can't do that with drinking water, but yeah, pool's completely different. All right, but I didn't get the second one, so do I need to talk to somebody about getting the second call? Um, what, what I can do is we'll, we'll follow up one with the county is to make sure, because they grid it based on your address. Okay. Uh, so they know who is in the city, who is in Park Lane, who is in Springfield area. Mm -hmm. And we'll just call and say, hey, on the list that you're using, you know, what, you know, we'll, 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 we got some things we can follow up on our I side. I figured if I got one, I should have got the other. Sure, absolutely. How does that work? You call the county and say, this is the message I need you to send out? Yeah, and then they text it to me right away to make for clarity. And then I said, go, and then they send it. So out. Could, could we, as a city, say, okay, we sent one out for the, you know, the boil advisory, and then say on Saturday, say, let's send another one just in case people missed it. So could we do... If it was a two-day event, just like this was Friday and Saturday, there's a boil advisory. Could we send another one out on Saturday oh. just to just to keep people keep, keep confirmation? Right. Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I can check into it. It's for emergencies, tornadoes. I mean, it isn't like some uh, fluff message. This isn't out of the city. This is out of the county. So I don't think it'd be an issue. But before right. we say yes to that, right. let's right. make sure right. that their system would allow, which it's, it should. Did you have a question? Or did you want to, we'll get you next. A couple of ideas you might consider. Let me my name's Joe Myers. Thank you. M Y E R S. And I live with my wife Grace, 225 Drake Avenue, Glass Street North in town. Uh, there's a couple of ideas that I've had that might help shape this to be more contiguous. Uh, one would be an alert light. An alert light that would be used, that goes around, can be a color that's not threatening, green, blue. It's not a cop light, 
but you could put it like where the ballpark, where that memorial is for veterans, right there by the water place, and it can be turned on. And all of it says, and you start the program, would be like what he has, except it would be tell your neighbor something's going on in the city, check the web page. Hang on just a second, sir, till that phone or whatever it is. We... It's mine, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I got it. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, we couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. Uh, that kind of thing can fill in a lot of gaps. The so people just see that and they'll go, oh, I need to talk to my neighbor. He's got a computer. We need to find out what's going on with the city. And everybody began talking amongst themselves in the city. How many people live here? 35,000 or something? I don't know. Uh, six. <laughs> six but, I wish we had 35,000. We have a lot more money to make. Well, so, okay, this. now that's, that's just one idea, but it's, the idea is to have something that's non-threatening, that would go around, that people would see, like if I don't stop at the marathon and walk up here and buy cigarettes, I'm not going to see that draped over eight and a half, you know, 11 piece of paper that says what? There's a water advisory. That's how I found out. Another idea, which I don't know how many people were involved, but you have the neighborhood watch group. I don't know how many people are involved in the neighborhood watch, but if those people who are watching were notified, then they could go, the ones that can, you know, then they can go door to door for a few doors, five doors, something, you know, and they can spread the word, you know, tell a friend. It's, it's all about marketing, you know. Well, they have those, you, you see them a lot, sometimes businesses use them, or I see them a lot at the base. It's like those portable traffic signs they'll put up, you know, like at the base, they'll say gate 19B is gonna be closed between this state and this state. That's I don't, actually a good idea. I, you know. Well, just like you're talking, to, just like when they have the fair, you know. I don't know, I don't know what those cost to rent or get them from the county, but. Well, they close down the city, Main Street, put the cars out there in the fall, <laughs> or you're going to have, and you can put that sign right down there at the end on both ends, there's a water revival, you know, with the yellow light going around, anything like that that you want to notify people in their cars prior to uh, going home. I mean, if we, did, if, we, if we did all the things that we've all talked about tonight, we're still going to miss people, but I do, I, out of all the ones I've heard tonight, I like that one the best. Well, just the idea of trying to cover the gaps. I know what you're doing. It, it I sounds mean, great. And you get a larger percentage than you ever had before, I'm sure, because there's enough people with phones, there's enough, you know, including children. Right, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good idea. Sir, go, go ahead. Tornado sign? That would, that'd probably really scare some people. <laughs> Sir? Rick Brest, uh, 513 Hamilton Avenue. Um, I'm going to take these topics one at a time since we're just talking about the water issue. Um, you mentioned you're going to induce panic by trying to notify people uh, from a car. Um, the report that was issued uh, on Friday night probably induced more panic than driving around so people could know what's going on. Mm -hmm. The report that was issued on the Springfield website said that you issued a boil notice, there's no other details, and we don't have anything else for you. And then within? Within two meantime, hours, you went back, but in the meantime, panic. We don't know how bad the water is. We don't really know if it was contaminated before 8 o'clock on Friday. But you put out this notice and implied that there's an emergency, and then, to make it worse, it's on a Friday night, and you all go home for the weekend. I don't think you live here, right? You don't live in New Pearl, right? 
Uh, no, I do not. I don't and, live in Dayton. And you don't live in New Carlisle, right? No, but he was here Friday night. Saturday because I called I the city there. offices all weekend. Nobody answered. Mm -hmm. I called the water department to try to give them information. Nobody answered. Mm -hmm. You know, you would think the leaders of the city would take some time to go down to their offices and respond to the questions from the constituents. Mm -hmm. So I think the next time, if there is one, uh, you know, you ought to do your job and make yourself available instead of just closing down and having a fine weekend while the rest of us are panicking. But I think this, I mean, you keep I referring. appreciate your opinion, but you're not going to sit here and bash these two people. We're here. Jason was here till 11 o'clock Friday night. Mr. Kitko came in from work. I they came on Saturday. They and couldn't be communicated with. So don't sit there and say that the, we don't do our job or we don't care, because that is just ridiculous. All, due respect. All I'm saying is you weren't available to answer questions from the public. Is that true or is that not true? I have a cell phone. You're more than welcome to give me a call. Well, I called the city and the emergency number they gave, I thought might go to the city manager, but it went and, to the police and, department and that's instead. that's why we met today, and I said there will be a message on our phone call, so when you call the city building, you will get a message. Um, my question uh, to the water superintendent is, um, industry standard says that you would investigate what caused it. So I haven't heard anything about investigating. You're just speculating on somebody having a dirty finger. E EPA came out today and did a full inspection of the water treatment player, cleared it. There will be a report at some point on that. Uh, they found no neglect, no uh, issues with the treatment plan or our process. And will you be doing any additional testing or will you go back exactly to the like protocol? We're going back to your original protocol where I test you know, exactly what they want and above and beyond just like we do now. So essentially this was just a false positive. It is the belief of both us and the EPA that yes, it could be a false positive. Okay. Rick, what, what's your, what was your address? 513 Hamilton Avenue. Go ahead, John. Sean Frank, I live at 105 North Church Street. Uh, only question I have is when it was first brought up, there was a non-disclosure. Now, was that just Facebook hoopla? Non-disclosure. What do you mean by non-disclosure? Non-disclosure. Non they didn't want to. They didn't want to say which. If they didn't want. That's what I heard. Now, if that's Facebook, I don't I, know. I don't understand your question. Oh, I think Sorry. he's. I think he's saying that. No further details. No further we details. don't have any specific details at that time. Yeah, and then as we're now, our details are coming out after we've done some tests and are confirming some of our suspicions. Well, because my wife or my fiance got onto Facebook and tried to con contact the mayor, in which there was no response because I have a nine month old son at home. And then we ran upstairs, took his bottle away, didn't know exactly what was happening. And I live three blocks from the police station, which a bullhorn, bullhorn would have been great. I'd have heard that right away. So what I was saying, if that's true or not, what do you guys know anything about the non-disclosure? I've never heard the, the non-disclosure on anywhere. I haven't seen it or heard it. The Did only thing I know else? is about details. Or am I the only one? I think I might have seen the newspaper article that said something along. It might have been WBTN that said, and the city fails, or the city declined to comment, or something. It sounded really sure. poorly Yeah, it sounded, it sounded like just a question. Just it sounded I'm not like. I'm going to give a detailed comment until I meet up with my department heads and my uh, and these gentlemen up here to find out what exactly went wrong. So again, we followed our protocol to a T. It was issued, and two hours later, after I spoke with Mr. Kitko, he went a little, a little further in detail. In the coming days, once we. Recombine and get more information. There'll probably be a little bit more information released, but I don't. I mean, it's the way to solve things is not come to a council meeting and attack us like we're not doing our job. Because I'm not attacking. I just I'm asked, not saying you were. But I just in order for us to move forward as a city, it's positive reinforcement. It's positive <clears throat> conversations. You know, we went above and beyond what we were supposed to do. Literally above and beyond. But none of that's appreciated. So driving down the street like this woman suggested? I'm not going to authorize somebody driving down the street with a bullhorn for this level of what we had. If it was a different tier or if it was a way more intense thing, then you take those kind of actions. So what if my son got sick 
from whatever happened, which didn't, thank God. If it was a situation where, if, and I was if, only, if, 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 if it was a situation where, like you said, I don't know if you guys are aware, our water, our water um, field is basically right there where the, the ball field is. So let's say a, a you know, a, a gas truck's coming up 235 and it tips and spills right towards our water. You know, if it was something that severe, well then I, I don't think anybody here would have a problem saying, let's get door to door because this could possibly kill somebody. But, you know, at the level, in my opinion, and correct me if I'm wrong, at the level of what they thought they may or may not have found, it wasn't extremely dangerous. Am I right? It was more of a precaution, to be honest with you. Right. You know, we, we had two negatives, one positive. The chances there as a safety thing, yes, we chose to do a boil notice. All right, thank you. That's all Michael. I know. <coughs> Mr. Lyle. I personally think as the gentleman standing back there now, I, pardon me, but overreaction. They said boil the water before you drink it. I mean, that's kind of simple. It doesn't, that's not real complicated at all, sir. Now, wait a minute, let me finish. Now, had the report said, hey, we've got mercury in the water, or we've got something from one of the fields leaching in that's going to kill you if you drink it, stay away from it, that's a whole different story. But it was put out to boil the water. Okay, and if you boil three to five minutes, it's safe to drink. And what I got on my phone later, because they did leave a message, I didn't answer it for a while until I heard about it. Well, and, <coughs> go ahead. That goes back to like she said, it'd been nice if, hey, blood horn, I'm four, eight houses down from it. Okay. I'm going to let it. I'm going to that one because I'm busy at work. I don't have to say that. My wife is busy with the kids taking care of her grandma. Right. So I didn't know. I didn't know to boil the water. Right. And, and you got to understand, even if they did that, there's going to be someone in the backyard with a rubber filler and a long more going, and they're not going to hear it walking out and taking it. No, I'm saying you may not hear it. You know, that's what I'm saying. No matter what you do, and we will talk about it, you are not going to get every person. When the fire siren goes off, there's people that don't hear it. People in the grocery store don't hear it. I've heard that. I know where I live. Sometimes I don't hear it. You know. And, and it's not that we're just sweeping under the rug and say we don't care. That's absolutely wrong. I don't care who says it. <clears throat> I think, and you should even know better than that. It's, you know, I think everything was followed. I think a whole lot of stuff on Facebook, if you watch it, what's the one, Lake and Maine or something? Don't believe in nothing you read on there. Somebody said, yeah, I read Lake and Maine, this is wrong and that's wrong. It's a big joke. They do it on a daily basis. Sorry. I mean, you then know. Why use Facebook? Pardon? Then why use Facebook? Because it gets the word out of the It gets the word out. So it's a joke. You just said No, no I said Lake and Maine is a joke. Lake. I didn't say all the Facebook. A, there's like a, uh, a website. It's kind of like the John Stewart. Or, um, like, or, like a Lord, or, or Stephen Colbert. That's a yeah. website. They post these yeah. things no, on that are just absolutely satirical. And they absolutely mean well, nothing. But I, think it's Facebook. I didn't say Facebook I mean, was a joke. And if you understood not, that way, I apologize. I said Lake and Maine, which is on Facebook. They print that stuff all the time. But, you know, and it's, it's ridiculous. It's like a dumpster. Right, yeah, my, my son couldn't look on Facebook. Right, and I do understand, understand your concern, but you think for your son, that's what I'm okay. saying. Have you been outside and not heard of cutting so rats or notice, something? I didn't know something. Right, right. right. Don't know again. So, yeah. right. Yeah. If I could go back to what Mr. Bridge uh, said a moment ago about me um, impugning his work ethic, what I was trying to state out, uh, state e explicitly, is that I don't think the people who don't live in New Carlisle care as much about the water quality. You are all, you wouldn't have no problem with boiling your water. That's the point I'm trying to make. Hey, um, no. well, Michael. So you're telling me. I'm good. No, let's just hold on. Hold on. Wait, 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 Randy, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Randy, hold on. Stop. I'm, got, I'm not even going to go after that question. The only thing I will say is those two that live outside the city called me and called the, the news the second it happened. I'm not, you know, we're not even going to entertain that remark because I think it's personally completely on. Well, I'm entitled to my opinion, right? Right, and you are, but so I'm not. can I continue? Yes, you can continue. I'm just, I'm not okay, going to let anybody um, I want to talk about the, um, the wastefulness uh, of this city administration. Um, I mean, from the pool to Twin Creeks to Madison School to little things like, um, how much did the metal signs cost to tell us that that was our tax dollars putting down pavement on uh, Edgebrook? 
$75, and that was actually an idea that came from the council member, and I thought it was a great idea, because that shows that your tax levy that you passed is that's your tax dollars. Well, you don't think we know that? No, a lot of people don't, actually. It's, I'm not kidding. I'm not trying to be funny. Those kind of signs, those kind of signs. Can I finish? I thought I had the floor here. Good. Those kind of signs. But you also only have five minutes. And you're almost over it. Are to edify the people who want us to know that you think you're doing a great job. Mm -hmm. And that sign didn't serve any purpose but to waste another $75 that came out of a hard, hard working person's pocket. Mm -hmm. Actually, so that's a kind of frivolous waste that really is disturbing. I've got two negative comments on that one from you and one from a council member. I've got so many positive comments back on those signs. Make it three. Well, three, but I've got way more than that to say they appreciate it. But I think that's just a, you know, a symptom of the wastefulness that comes out of this council and this administration on a daily basis. For instance, for instance, let me ask you something. You see that truck that's sitting out there? What year is it? Can I have my five minutes? No, or? you can't. Excuse me. Oh, what year is that? It's a 67. It's a 67 truck. I think we stretch our dollars as far as we can a lot of well, the time. Well, you have to when you throw away millions. Where? On Twin Creek, we still owe half a million dollars on that. And uh, did you sell that? Did it go up for any kind of competitive? Hey, first off, the Twin Creek fiasco uh, was a result of the developer killing himself. So if that never would have happened, uh, it didn't have anything to do with the, with the real estate crash either. You know, well, probably that has something to do, but the catalyst behind that was the developer. Well, no, the catalyst developer. behind it was the council thinking that they could be real estate investors mm -hmm. and somehow, you know, make the city rich off of 25 new houses. I don't think the intention was that to make the city rich because we're just not going to have to get loaded all 25 houses up. Yeah, yeah. well, Mr. Mr. Bridge, Mr. Bridge, he's, you've had your five minutes, which is per our charter. We are going to move on. Good. Thank you. I'll be back next week for my final. Michael, well, excuse me. Remind him that after everybody speaks, he does have the right to come back if he wants to talk to you. I don't know if you know that for sure or not, but he does. Robert's Rules of Orders. When everybody else doesn't speak, he's allowed to come back. Yes. Okay? Unless it's Just so he knows that. Not really because the charter says right. that we follow the charter and then Robert's Rules if there's not a specific charter amendment that dictates otherwise. Mr. Allender. Tom Allender, I live at 610 Terre Court. I'd like to bring up something different. Uh, every fall you have our streets cleaned. Have to come in and clean our streets. Why don't we do that in the spring months when we have all the sand and stuff in the curbs from the winter? You know, we're all trying to clean our yards up and do everything. That, I think that make the city look a lot better. Your boulevard on Smith Street or up there is full of sticks and crap that's laid there from the winter. Why can't we have that done this time of the year? Why do you choose the fall? I can answer that. I'd love to do two times. The reason I do it, and it's usually in the fall, is that's when we get done dura patching. Um, I'd love to do it and then dura patch, which is the gravel pothole repair, <clears throat> that lays more down. So usually when they complete that service, then that's when we do the street cleaning. And it usually is taking most of the summer to get that done. I'm with you. I'd love to be able to do it in the spring. Runs about seven thousand dollars each uh, citywide suite, but we don't have fourteen thousand to do it twice. So I wait for the street department to finish the pothole repair, and then I do it afterwards. Currently, that's the the current way we do it. Okay, I just think it would make the city look better if we did. Oh, that. I absolutely agree. I'd love to do it twice and, and get it done twice a year. <clears throat> My next question is: I I'm a landlord here in town. I have a property at 415 West Jefferson, and I'm there quite a bit. And 409 and a half West Jefferson, the guy's selling drugs upstairs. There's a kid, there was a heroin overdose there probably a month or so ago. So I was up, I'm up there a lot. I was up there two weeks ago. And I was there a couple hours, like four or five cars pull up and they run upstairs, run back down. You know, you know what they're doing. So I left and pulled around the corner, went to Lincoln. I was going home, there was a deputy set pulled over in his SUV sitting there. So I pulled up and told him who I was and uh, what was going on. He said, uh, well, I can't help you. you you've got to call drug, drug enforcement. I don't have nothing to do with that. I said, what? He said, no, I have nothing to do with that. You've got to call drug enforcement. What's your number? I don't know. You look it up. You'll find it. Call them. You tell them what you told me. That's ridiculous. We have a drug problem, and you tell a deputy, and he tells you he can't help you. I agree with you. Four oh nine and a half West Jackson. Mr. Mayor. Was it a new car object? 
It was a young guy driving on an SUV. Mr. Lindsay, did you have a comment? Sir, uh, <clears throat> I don't, you probably did not see the back of the deputy or the back of the car. All of our cars has the car law written on them. Occasionally we have a county car up here, but uh, from my standpoint, no deputy should ever tell you that. They should take your information and pass it on, not tell you to call somebody else. You're talking to law enforcement, and I'm sure the chief deputy over there will agree with me, and I am also sure that he will check into this and find out who it was. Do you know the date and time that this happened? Oh, it was three. It was a lead, It was about three weeks ago, and he was sitting on Lincoln uh, first block off of Clay uh, East, and he was sitting in his car by himself. And this was going on, you know. And I thought, well, maybe he could pull over there. I mean, this is happening all morning. Maybe he could pull over there, but. You know, he said this ain't, maybe he's delivering warrants or something. I don't know, but to me, it's pretty sad when we have a drug problem and you tell them about this and Sir, they say it's not their. The, it was an SUV? Yeah. Okay, it wasn't. It, it, it wasn't, I was just going to tell you, we do not have any young males in our city running our department here. Or then I'm a liar. No, I'm not saying you're a liar because I said oh. we have other deputies from out in the county and other places come into New Car Lot. Sorry, I said it. But, but there's, Sorry, they're not it. our deputies, but the chief deputy will look into that. No, Tom, I'm always saying it wasn't one of our contracted deputies. Yeah, it wasn't one of our contracted No, I understand. I'm just... We pay his wages, don't we? Yeah, no, I'm not arguing with you. Well, I'm just, I'm just saying, a, 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 as far as... A, he's one block over from the house, one block, and he won't make a full round in the morning and look, and there's four or five cars there that morning, and this was before 10.30 in the morning. Right. No, I'm not arguing. I'm saying as far as a, a process of elimination for them, it wasn't at least one of our four, so we can knock them out of who it was yeah. and was not. So, I don't see where we should try to protect our people. I don't care who it was. He's a deputy or she's a deputy or whoever it was. They ought to do their job. I, I agree. Okay. Don't <laughs> sound like it. Everybody's making an excuse now. No, no, nobody made an excuse, Tom. We're trying to find out who it was. I, the first thing I asked you was one of our deputies or her. And send them back to the county and tell them we want another deputy. That's what I'm getting. They told us to do this for some reason. I didn't go to look up those phone numbers or nothing. You know, to me, it made me mad. He don't care. Why should I care? Well, I, I understand that. I would have called the yeah. sheriff's office. I will definitely be Thank you, sir. Real quick, real quick. If if indeed he isn't a new car yes, and he is in the town, he's doing the car of policing, right? Possibly not, no. So what's he doing here? County policing. He's, he's doing a couple of the whole county. County yeah. right. yeah. 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 I mean, he could be serving a warrant. He could be yeah. doing a number of things. Okay. But he's still a person who would go to the jail problem. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, and that's exactly. my point. It really wouldn't matter if it's, if it's a New York cop. If, if, if he's in a town, that's who he would go to. If you see a fight or a gun fight, that it, it doesn't matter if it says New Carlisle on the back. Exactly. I understand and that's, that. And I think that's why he's a little bit upset. Well, then you hear of an overdose in that apartment yeah. a month or so ago. You look it up and get the Tom, you're absolutely right. The only thing we're trying to get at is to find out what deputy it was. And that's the first thing I asked you was a new car out deputy because I know you know all of them. No, I don't know. Well, I you know most of them. Right. But anyway, that's what we were trying to figure out. Was it one of the deputies here or one from Clark County? Could be. <laughs> Rachel? Yeah. She is? Do we know each other? Or do we see each other? No, we don't that. You guys really believe it? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. All right. I mean, I just think it's, it's pretty pathetic that guys are over one block. Oh, I agree I with you. Know, you. Know, we have a drug problem all over the United States, and he could at least pull around the corner and sit there for a little bit. And Tom, the reason I wanted the process to eliminate that, because if it was one of ours, there's one person it could be, and tomorrow morning they would have been asked to be out of the city. That's the only reason we're getting that. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's all we that's were trying to find out. We Mr. have one male on our, on our force, so the process of elimination would be very easy at that point. Mr. Reynolds. Mr. Allender, you came on the right night because right there sits the second in command of the uh, county sheriff's <laughs> office. So right you see, came on the right night, I tell you that much. Well, I, I understand it, and it just bugs me, you know. Uh, he's, he's, Chief Deputy has said he's definitely going to check it out tomorrow morning. And believe me, he will. He'll follow through. Uh, you did the right thing. We appreciate you it. did the right thing. And thank you for doing it. <laughs> okay.
Okay, Mr. Oh. Lindsay, let's get this moving. Right. I would like to ask Chief Deputy if he would, when you investigate this and find out who it is, if you would let Mr. Bridge know and Council know who this person was. And then if yeah, you I'm can, sure keep him out of our city if he's going to be. I'm not sure I'll ever find out what deputy it was, but right. I'm definitely going to address the issue that the gentleman spoke about, and that is a problem that we need to address. Yeah, they were at the house at the corner of Clay and uh, Lincoln, or the, or the one beside it. I okay. they probably had the one at Clay and Lincoln, where, they, where I think the guy was set, he was car, set in the car there, the person was. And like I said, I walked away until I stopped and got out. I told him who I was. And I, you know, I will give you my card before I leave. You're welcome to call my office. I have a direct line. And if you have any further <laughs> issues or problems, you call me. I'll take care of it. Thank you, Mr. Allender. Any other comments from the audience before we move on tonight? Real quick. Real quick. Real quick. None of us feel like you guys don't do your job. We're attacking you. It's just as citizens of this community, <coughs> we didn't know the severity of the emergency. And I think that's the, the issue that, we, that I'm here and, and, and we weren't saying you guys weren't doing your job. But you were. Like this, this gentleman said that they took one and it was positive and they took two more than negative. That little bit of information would have been awesome to know. Right to the media. And we would have known immediately. It's not that big a deal. Well, what about. Let me, let me tell you this, though, sir. The more information you give the media, Dale, this is no disrespect to you. But if I would have said to them one came back positive and whatever the case would be, it would have been twisted and spun like you would not believe. It. And they do that because they are allowed to. But sometimes no information leads to people thinking what the world. But what you knew Randy? that you had to boil your water, and that was the goal. What about what about what about a simple grade system, kind of like you know the defense grade? You know, I, we're not. We we follow the procedure that. All other municipalities. Right, no, but I'm saying, I'm saying, if you put out a boil advisory, and I, we got to get moving on this. We've been talking about it forever. But if we, let's say, we did a boil advisory tomorrow, and it was the same situation, we have a, a, a number system: severity level one through five. If it's a one, you know it's basically just precaution. Two, it's three. It's like okay, now we've got an issue. I mean, would that be better? Well, that's another question. What streets next? Up, how that goes. Uh, well, I'm, I'm working on I'm working on two different streets for next year. Next year, next year. Yeah, I got. To, I have to because the one that on Edgebrook was over two hundred thousand, and it um, for that three thousand feet, the one I'm looking at next year. You know, if I'm looking at either Greenheart spinning in that area, they're a little bit longer. And then I got uh, to fi finish the following. It, it, it's it's one of those. We're gonna go look. Yeah, no, the goal now is putting asphalt down. The problem with this is the levy brings in $130,000 a year. And I wanted to do re street reconstruction because that neighborhood and the Edgebrook neighborhood did not have base under any of the streets. They have no drainage under curb and gutter. So I was not able to do Edgebrook as a full reconstruction, so I had to do an overlay. That was a $3 million project. I got down to 200000 So when I go to White Pine, I think it's going to end up being the same way. Um, it's not what I want to do, but it's, it's the only way I can get good asphalt, get some good curb and gutter back in there. Uh, and then the ones you see over in the Prentice area, Edgebrook, Flora, or not Edgebrook, but Flora, those are, I get federal tax dollars back in via CDBG grant, mm -hmm. and that usually pays for 50% or a little bit more, and then all I have to do is match. So they do those in reconstruction. They're, they have a more of a, they, they say you need to do more, you get more points if you can do more of a project. All right. Moving on. One more. Dale. <laughs> Mr. Grimm. Dale Grimm, 114 South Main Street. And for those who don't know me, I'm the publisher of the New Kalau News. Friday evening about 7.30, I get Facebook messages on my phone. Sometimes they're useful, sometimes they're a pain in the neck. But about 7.35 on Friday evening, I got a notification that the mayor's wife had posted on Facebook that there is a boil advisory for New Kalau. About 20 minutes later, I got a call from Mr. Bridge stating that there was a boil advisory for New Carlisle. I said, great, can you send us an email with all the details? He said, or call Andy, and, and he said he would do one or the other. Well, we did get the email um, about 10 minutes after uh, an out-of-town newspaper had already posted it on their website. We responded to Mr. Bridge, and I said, what happened? 
And I got a response. He said, uh, Mr. Kitko's statement is below, and there was a link to an out and out newspaper's website. Apparently, they had either interviewed Mr. Kitko or he had provided a statement. We still didn't have any official word on a water boil advisory. Um, by the by, the one call works. I got three messages that there was a boil advisory and three messages that it was canceled. Uh, so we sent questions to Mr. Bridge and Mr. Kitko. One question was, when was the last sample taken that was negative for total coliform? The response was January 2015 monitoring. Now, I take that to mean, when was the last time that the water was clean? January 2015 monitoring requirements were not met for total coliform sampling. We're required to monitor our drinking water for specific contaminants on a regular basis. Results of regular monitoring are an indicator of whether or not your drinking water meets health standards. During January 2015, we did not complete all monitoring or testing for total coliform bacteria and therefore cannot be sure of the quality of your drinking water during that time. Samples were collected by city employees, but proper procedures were not followed by the testing lab and the samples were untestable. We asked when was the last time it was negative and the response was January 2015. I haven't responded. Neither of us responded. Neither to responded to your email yet. They'll be quite honest with you. So I don't know what information you're getting. This was sent to Randy and Howard. And right. If you're referring to the bold red, that's something Andy typed. The bold red. Andy, Andy put that in. We didn't send that to us. We have not responded to your email. Okay, you've not responded. No, we have not responded yet. When was the last time that the sample was taken? That was wait a minute. For he just call said call. you guys told him that our water was dirty. January 2015. Where did he get it if you didn't know? Andy, Where'd you get it? Andy sent that to us. I don't know where he Talk about him. inducing panic, man, standing there I, telling people that the water was dirty. Since January 2015? Give me a break, Andy. The CCR report for 2015. You want to explain that? Yeah, I can say exactly where the article or where the written information came from. Okay. I don't know where he got it. It's part of the 2014 CCR report. Okay. Uh, in 2014, actually January of 2015, we put it on the 2014 CCR report. Samples were collected just like normal. Uh, we did our, our routine sampling. The lab did not uh, hold time. It's 30 hours on, on taking the sample. The lab did not test it in that 30 time 30 hour time period. Therefore, the sample could not be used. Uh, it was during the last week of the month and I had no time to collect a new sample. The most recent uh, information nope. on the city's website, I'm told, is 2014. There, it is due by July of 2015, the new CCR report. It will be on the next water bill. That's an annual report, report. but that doesn't tell you of the bacteria test that we do monthly. Correct. Right. The last sample, last negative sample at this point, we had nine negative samples came back Sunday. Okay. Prior to that, it would have been Friday, we had two negative samples, one positive sample. With that one positive, will we be getting a response to our questions? <coughs> yeah, or, uh, possibly. We're going to work on it. We don't have to respond to media requests, but we, are, we will probably accommodate your um, depending on depending on what we feel as though is, is the best to release. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Moving on. Uh, let's see. Comments from members of the public. Committee reports. Mr. Bridge. None tonight. None tonight. Resolutions. None tonight. We'll move on to ordinances. <coughs> Mr. Collier, whenever you're ready. Ordinance 16-19. Introduction tonight. Public hearing. Action on 6 2016. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for the purchase of a used combination sewer jetting vacuum truck and sewer camera. Ordinance 16-20, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 6-2016. An ordinance amending chapter 238 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding the division of fire. Ordinance 16-21, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 6-2016. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with the city of Springfield, Ohio, 
for the purpose of, con of continuing to provide dispatching services to the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. Thank you, sir. Uh, move on to other business tonight. We're going to have to uh, have two motions to excuse Councilman Craybacher and Councilman McIntyre. So moved. Second. Just a motion for both. Can we do yeah. both? Yes. Okay. So. Who made the motion? Mr. Mr. Lowry and seconded by Mr. Reynolds. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Craybocker and Mr. McIntyre are excused. All right. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Carter, <coughs> you can continue. Under other business, there'll be a crime watch meeting uh, Wednesday, June the 8th at 6.30 p.m. That'll be here at Smith Park Shelter House. Uh, there'll be a foam frenzy, which is sponsored and put on by the National Trails Parks and Recreation. That'll be Friday, June 24th at 5 p.m. here at Smith Park. Uh, community garage sale will be Saturday, June 18th. A rain out date will be Saturday, June 25th. The farmer market's opening day will be uh, on the same day as community garage sale, Saturday, June 18th, downtown New Carlisle, 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. <coughs> And Chautauqua concerts are scheduled here at the Smith Park stage on June 12th and June 26th, starting at 6.30 p.m. Great. Thank you, sir. Is that 22 they're doing this year, or is that just these only two this month? I think that's just two this, two this month. Yeah. Okay. I think there's two every month. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. July and August. All right. Uh, executive session, none tonight. And, uh, Mr. Reynolds. Mr. Mayor, I move we adjourn. Thank you, sir.